Hello and welcome to another video of Black Vito. Today is the day that many of you have been waiting for. Today I'm going to do a reaction video to Graham. I'm not sure if you can see Graham there, but he did a reaction video to my video. So I'm going to do a reaction video to his reaction to my video. And as some of the longtime subscribers already know, I am blind as a bat. So I'm going to put these glasses on because I'm not going to even want to fake it till I make it. So let's get it popping. Ooh, wait. Let's see what this man has to say. It's no surprise every single time a Millennial Money episode posts from CNBC. I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I saw my face on his channel, it was definitely a moment in my life. I was like, one of those things, you know, people always talk about visualizing stuff and whatnot. And like, you know, you got to visualize, man. You got to visualize. Well, I really visualize me in this moment happen time and time again. So the fact that it actually happened, it was just like, it blew my mind when I actually saw it. I remember I was in the gym with one of my friends. He said I was pretty calm and stoic about it, but inside I was going crazy. I was expecting this to be on like a living on $250,000 a year in greater Baltimore, but no, living on $25,000 a year. So I think this is going to appeal to a much broader demographic and I'm excited to give it a shot. Yeah, so for me, that was one of the things that I was also worried about. I thought that millennial money wouldn't want me to be on the show because my income was so low. So I, the fact that it does appeal to a wider audience is something I didn't even think about when I was, you know, applying. I just knew that I wanted to be on the show and I also knew that Graham would probably do a reaction to the show. See, that's why you just gotta go for it. You just gotta go and try. And at that point, I didn't realize I need to sit back and really think about what I want out of life, what I want to achieve and what direction I wanna go before I stack up another thirty, forty thousand dollars in student loan debt. Crazy, it took him thirty thousand dollars to realize that, wait a second, maybe this is a bad idea. Thirty K. Thirty K I guess some people have it way worse than that. They're like a hundred K deep and they're like, oh, what did I do? Although only set him back thirty K. Jeez. But even then, thirty thousand dollars is just I think it's so much for an education. Why? YouTube is free. So yes, so the whole thirty thousand dollar thing I kind of talk about it in the video. Someone's mowing long back, out back. There was a lot of things that went into play as far as why I stayed in college for that long. A lot of the things didn't get touched on in the video, but the whole heart condition thing that I did mention in the video was a big factor of why I didn't. I didn't necessarily think about what I wanted to do beforehand because I never thought I was going to live past high, uh, high school. How he spends his money. Those are debit cards. Okay, I see an ally bank there. These are, look at that, that's a debit card. I see right below that, the purple one that looks like ally bank, that's good. And then that looks like Citibank. All right, so Graham, this is the answer to your question. So of these cards that you see here, three of them are debit cards and three of them are credit cards. But I have another debit card that I keep in another location that I did not put into the video but I have it stored away in my secret location. So I'm a manager of a tax office and also I do Uber and Lyft. The tax office, ooh, that's not a word I like to hear. The ta taxes, gosh, don't even get me started on taxes. Jeez, it, the, the taxes are, are too high, as that meme would say. If you think the taxes are too high, Graham, it's probably because you're living in California. Yeah, I, I don't pay almost anything in taxes, so I, I don't feel your pain in that respect. <laughs> Doing pretty much taxes, that kind of lowered my income because believe it or not, I actually make more money doing Uber and Lyft a lot of the times than what I do doing taxes. I really like doing taxes though because it gives me more knowledge or, you know, human capital, so to speak. So that can actually help me in my future more than probably, you know, doing Uber and Lyft can. Why is he not making more money doing taxes? I think taxes are the most complicated things in the world. It's, it's so difficult to wrap your mind around that. And if he understands that concept, some of these tax people charge hundreds of dollars an hour. So why am I not getting paid more at the office? Well, there's a few different factors that go in there. Obviously having a college degree would have helped me make more money. I did have some higher offers. Like I had one person offer like basically, let's just say 50% of the revenue that I bring into the office. The problem is that job would have been all the way down in Delaware. I would have to live with my dad. And if you ever lived with my dad before, you would know why I would prefer not to live with my dad. Long story short, he's a bit controlling and I'm a bit uh, independent. I like doing what I want. When you're in Maryland doing taxes, you have to be licensed to do taxes. 
and you have to do continued education credits. So that job offers those credits for me for free. So it does add some value there as well. One thing is it's about three minutes away from my house. So I, I can pretty much walk there. I knew I would be a managerial position there. If I go work for someone else, I might not be a manager. So I'm looking at getting the experience of a manager, also the free education, so to speak. So for me, I felt like it was um, a lot of value that I was getting outside of just doing taxes and the money that they could give to me. I was living with my uh, girlfriend at the time and her roommate didn't want me there. So to keep the peace, I, I really had nowhere else to go because I was waiting to move in with my brother. I had to sleep in my uh, 1993 Firebird Pontiac. Why didn't the friend want to stay there? I want more info on that. Seriously, Some, something's up. Something's up there. There's more to that story. There's no way the girlfriend, I don't think, would be like, hey, sorry, you can't stay here. My roommate says no. Uh, you know, go sleep in your car. There's, there's more to that story. There's more to the story. I, I just don't know. I don't know. I just I feel bad for like stay at the place. Maybe the roommate was just maybe the roommate was a Karen. That's probably what what it was. The roommate was a Karen. Uh, had, didn't like having fun. Didn't like bending the rules a little bit. That's that's what I think. Maybe. Yeah. So that that was a question I got a lot. I got people saying all types of things. Oh, it's probably because this is a corny. You know all these bad words that I can't say on her. I heard people say, "Oh, well, you should have tried to sleep with her." That's maybe that, that maybe that would have helped her. Want to you know? They were saying all types of crazy things. There's a logical explanation. Actually, I would say that my girlfriend at the time, which is my ex-girlfriend, she told me I could stay, right? She, the roommate wanted me to leave, but the girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend told me I could actually stay, but I didn't want to cause a conflict between the two. And the college dorm was like, they shared a room together. So I think it was just a privacy privacy thing. She got to get dressed in the closet or in the bathroom because you know she don't want me to see her uh, getting dressed. I mean, I can understand that. Class. I was working in the afternoons and I was sleeping in my car at night. It gave me a wonderful opportunity to save money. I love that. That is an amazing shift in perspective there. It's just, hey, it is what it is, but guess what? I was able to save money. That's very true. I think just having that mindset to find some sort of benefit in any situation I think is so important because what you might think right now is a setback, you might look 10 years from now and see like, wow, this is, this is really transformative to happen to me and now I'm even better because of it. And if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't be where I am today and I owe it to that. You never know where things might lead in the future, for better or for worse. But there is usually something positive to everything. When I was sleeping in the car, I didn't look at it like a negative thing. It didn't feel negative. It felt good. It felt freeing. You know, it's kind of like when people go to those uh, resorts, like up in the mountains with monks or something like that, and they give away all their possessions just to be alone for, you know, a peaceful weekend. That's what it felt like. I just felt free. And it felt good. And, you know, it was a way to save money. And all of my other options were not ideal. I can get into that perhaps in a future video, but for the sake of time, I just want to know it was one of my best options at the time. The thing I did to save money was um, I started eating once a day. So at first I did this just to save money because I just didn't have a lot of money coming in and I was spending money on books and stuff like that. And I wanted to save money up so I could get my own apartment, get out of the living room. Look at that. I like how every sentence it just is like, and I did that to save money. And I did that to save money. And I did this to save. I love it. it, it this this is basically uh, my my uh, spirit animal. A little bit. It's like I did this, save money. Yeah. So one of the things I love most about Graham's reaction to this video, and I'm sure some of you saw it as well, but when I see his reaction, some of the reaction, like the little small frame. You can see that smile is so genuine. Like I've, I don't think I've ever seen any of his reaction videos where the smile was just so like unforced. It was just like so effortless smile. Like he seemed like he was actually enjoying it. That's what I really loved about watching this video. You know, all my keys are falling off the computer, and uh, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping this computer. I know I need a new computer at some point, but guess what? Here's another key. There's the E. There's the E key that's falling apart. But yeah, it saves money. Doing this and keeping, keeping this computer with the keys falling apart can save money. Graham, come on, Graham. You could at least try to super glue the keys or something. I mean, come on. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm cheap too. Our frugal, whatever you want to call it, miserly, parsimonious, whatever you want to call me. But I would at least try to super glue or something because what if you lose the key? What if it just falls off somewhere and you lose it? 
So I will put some super glue on it and then I'll just put it right there. Just like that. Just a little bit of super glue. Some gorilla glue. Ooh, yeah, that's what you need. With that money that I saved on food is I I started investing in uh, stocks and ETFs and stuff like that. So that money started to grow. So I wasn't just holding on to that money, but I was growing that money. And eventually I used that money that I, that was growing to pay down debt and other stuff like that. God, this guy's so smart. This, this guy is on it. Seriously, he, he's going to be making 100K a year in no time. I hope I'm making 100K in no time. But as far as me being very smart, I wear these glasses to make me seem smarter than I am. I hope it's working. Hey, let me know in the comment section below, is it working? If it's not working, please humor me and tell me it is working so I can feel better about myself. I don't really consider myself as a budgeter. I don't really budget. I just have a natural tendency to not want to spend money. But as far as tracking things, I do try to track all of my income and my expenses. So this right here is the part where I'm talking about where G Grant Dram just has a genuine smile. What I just said just like made him genuinely smile. I mean, look at his face right there. Like that is like a lib he's not forcing that smile. I don't at least I don't think he is. Either that he should be in Hollywood making Hollywood videos, but that is like the most sincere smile that I've ever seen in my life and that that made me feel good. That made me feel great actually. On like an income statement and then also I do a balance sheet at the end of every month. Ah, I like that everything he says is good. Everything he says is good. Look at this. Okay. <laughs> and, and honestly, I'm really happy. Okay. Housing, $823 a month. His share of rent, electricity, Wi-Fi. Fine. Okay. Food, $200 a month. That's fantastic. Phone, $67 a month. Personal and business life. That's fantastic. Misc, $58 a month. Clothing, personal care. Uh, clothing and personal. Yeah, I guess it's pretty good. Books, $40 a month. Great. Gym, $40 a month. Perfect. Transportation, $30 a month increases when he drives for uber lyft okay subscriptions 24 dollars a month netflix and audible this is like honestly everyone should be just copying his budget i don't care if you make 25 grand a year or uh, a million dollars a year if you just copy copy this he's not overspending in anything nothing it's perfect so first off it's definitely not perfect but i do thank you graham but this is the thing i could definitely cut down on my food expense year and also track my savings rate look at this guys this is an example of what to do seriously i like he's making twenty five thousand dollars a year and he's trying to save half of that half of that at twenty five thousand dollars a year it goes to show you anyone who's making like 50 60 grand is like i can't save money yes you can so can anyone save I don't know. Some people might have find it harder to save for reasons that are legit reasons. But yes, I do believe that most people, the vast majority of people can save significantly more money than they're actually saving. But they just like to go spend money. Oh, Jerome, why don't you just live a little? Well, how about this? Well, don't complain about it when you don't have any money. You can go live a little. Don't complain about me not living a little when you don't have any money. Don't come asking me for money. If you ain't, if you out here living a little, just like you cut down on some expenses and what you'll find is your quality of lifestyle doesn't really change that much, but your savings rate does. Started putting money into, I mean, it seemed like a wonderful deal. I love making tax free money. So I decided just to put money in there. Go student loans. I bet the student loans are at some high interest rate. He's too smart just to withdraw the money to pay off like a 3% loan. I, I bet those are high interest rate loans. He knows what he's doing here. But you know what, my You know, the highest interest rate that I had on some of the student loans was 4.7%. The lowest interest rate was maybe like 3.5, maybe 3.2%. But I would say that the money probably would have been better off just keeping that in a Roth IRA. I saw a comment on one of the videos saying, oh, well, 20, 30 years down the line, you're going to regret that, you're taking that money out, the Roth IRA. Guess what, buddy? I regret it now. I was diagnosed with a, with a heart condition that was potentially deadly. And the doctor said that if you, know, if you exercise real hard, you could die at any moment. So I continued exercising hard. I continued living my life the way that I wanted to live. Wait, wait, I'm so confused. He, what? So if he exercises too hard, it just, I wouldn't, if, if that were me and I was told that by a doctor, I would just straight up just stop exercising. I would exert myself as least as possible. I would just, I would have people carry me everywhere I need to go. 
If I need to go to the kitchen, Macy, just carry me. That's it. I'm not, I'm not lifting a finger, you might. I want to live. I want to live too, Graham. I want to live as much as anyone else. I think about death every single day. But here's the thing. I was like that for the first three days. I was just like, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit on my couch. I did everything. But then once you're really faced with that at such a young age, it does change your whole outlook on life. You know, not too many eight year old or eighth graders have to really think about, oh yeah, this could end at any moment, like a snap. Not too many eighth graders have that mindset. That's a crazy thing to me when people say, uh, one day you're gonna die, Jerome, so why, don't, why are you so worried about money and all of these other things? Or, you know, this and that. They always say, well, what if you die tomorrow? Blah, blah, blah. Like, I have thought about my inevitable denies and how that should affect the way I live my life more than probably almost every single one of you guys because I've been thinking about it every single day since eighth grade. I think you're like 11 years old in eighth grade or 10 years old in eighth grade, somewhere thereabouts. So that's, I'm 23 now. So that's like 10 years, 11, 12 years, somewhere thereabouts where I'm thinking about my inevitable death every single day. Literally, y'all can think I'm joking every single day. So it, it blows my mind when people say, well, Jerome, you know, you could die tomorrow. So why don't you, I've thought about that more than you. You, you need to be thinking about that. You could die tomorrow. I need, you need to think about that. Not me, you. I think about that all the time. And I feel very confident in myself that I can build a good amount of wealth with or without a degree. I don't think he needs a degree. I, I wouldn't go into accounting. He's got such a good mindset. I think he's got to be in business for himself, doing something or another. I just, I, I think he's got so much willpower to do things on his own. I don't think he needs a degree. That's just, just, just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, guys. So no matter if I get a degree or not, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it on my own. If I do get a degree, I'm still gonna be using it for the way that I want to use it. I'm not trying to get an accounting degree to go be an accountant at some accounting firm. I'm gonna get an accounting degree to do my own business endeavors. One of the main reasons why I want an accounting degree is to better understand financial statements when I'm reading through them. I understand the accounting process. So when I'm looking through a, a you know a financial report for an investment that I'm looking into, I'll know exactly what I'm looking at. Thanking myself every single day for that decision that I made to sleep on that couch, to eat once a day, to live that lifestyle, so I don't have to live that lifestyle ever again. Perfect. I have nothing bad to say. I, I was expecting I could say something bad. There's nothing. He's doing everything right, and it just goes to show you that again, it, if he could save half of his income on twenty-five thousand dollars a year, you could save half of your income, no matter how much money you make. Forty percent. 40, 10, 10,000 divided by 25, 40%. So I don't under, I don't know why he didn't mention the SBA loan thing. I didn't see him say anything about that. I'm really curious about his opinions on the SBA loan situation. Cause I had a lot of people saying one thing while a lot of people saying other thing. Obviously he's a person who's in real estate. So he kind of understands the idea of, you know, interest rate versus the rate of return they're getting on that money. So I would like to see his opinion on that. I was reading the comments. Someone says he has a YouTube channel. Let's see, what's his YouTube? Why didn't he mention his YouTube channel? I did. No way. No way, bro. I didn't know this is you. Black Vito, Moneyology. Hello. Bro, you comment on every single one of my videos. Every single one of my videos for years now. Dude, fantastic, man. If they included it, what is about to happen would have never happened. So I can, it worked out better than I, better than I deserve. So I'm gonna link your information down below in the description because CNBC Make It did not include it. Well, guess what? I'm going to include it. Let's get him to 5,000 subscribers. If we could do that, that would make me very happy. I'm going to link his information in the description, and I'm sure he's going to comment on this, and then he's going to be the pinned comment. If you wouldn't mind just taking a split second, going to his channel, just subscribing to his channel. we got to support this guy. And uh, I, I'm so happy for him. I think it's so cool. Congratulations, man. I think that's exciting. And we did it. We got to 5,000. In fact, you guys did it. Y'all doubled it. He told y'all 5,000. Y'all did 10,000. I appreciate you guys. I really do. I really appreciate you guys for coming subscribing. So thank you. We did it. So I watched your episode of Millennial Money. It's it's really good. I've seen uh, you've been commenting on the channel for how many years now? Yeah, I started my Roth IRA because I saw a video 
of you talking about your Roth IRA back in 2017. So it has to be at least, by, I might not have been commenting as much back then, Yeah. but I definitely probably started around uh, December 6th, 2017. Wow, man, that's so cool. Yeah. So I want to say as a thank you, I want to do something for you. I want to send you a thousand bucks, but one condition, you got to put it in your Roth IRA. I can do that, but I can't do that. I maxed out my Roth IRA this year. <laughs> do it so I, I would have to wait until the end of the year. Fine. Do whatever you want to do. Next year. But I want to send you a thousand dollars. It's just a thank you for supporting the channel and commenting on everything. But wait, there's more. Uh, I also want to give you access to the mentorship group, also for free, and the Real Estate Agent Academy for free, and the YouTube. Uh, did you buy the YouTube? Academy? Yeah, about YouTube Academy. All right, then I'm gonna find a way to refund you. Uh, anyway, what's uh? How about this? What's your? Do you have a Venmo? I have a Cash App. What is your cash tag or name on Cash Tag? All right, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate my it. Night. You made my night. All right, then I'll see you soon. All right, see you soon. So he said, well, "I'll see you soon." So maybe, maybe he just meant in the comment section. Maybe he meant in person. I don't know. We'll find out. But. I really do. I really do appreciate that. And one thing that a lot of people have been asking is, did he actually send a thousand dollars? He did actually send a thousand dollars, folks. He was not bluffing. He is not a bluff. He sent a thousand dollars. This was this was actually a phenomenal experience. I'm trying to tell you guys, I, I thought this over in my head. I visualized this and I'm not like one of these visualizing gurus or anything like that, but I visualized this so many times and it just worked out so much better in reality than I would have ever dreamed of in practice. You know what I'm saying? So I just, it just, for me, it was a phenomenal experience and I really do appreciate this. I mean, I've been working on this YouTube channel for like two and a half years and the fact that I've finally reached 10,000 subscribers, I really do appreciate you guys. Like I've been trying to tell every single one of y'all that comment or whatever that I appreciate you guys for subscribing. And the reason why I do that is because that's actually how I feel. So hopefully this reaction video was entertaining and everything you hoped it was. If it wasn't, we'll try again because we're going to do a reaction video to the millennial money video itself. And also I'm going to do a millennial money reaction video to Graham's millennial money. So stay tuned and subscribe. Have a good day.